Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our worship today. Um, and it's great to have you with us. We'll just take a moment of silence as we collect our thoughts and uh, begin our time of prayer. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, uh, this Sunday's readings include a story that Jesus taught about uh, forgiveness. And one of his disciples, Peter, apostles, Peter, uh, asked him, Lord, uh, how many times do we have to forgive? Seven? I think seven would be the, a perfect number, and that would be enough. If I could forgive somebody seven times, that would be awesome. And then Jesus said, no, let's try seven times 70. Uh, and uh, I think they all looked at him and said, what are you talking about? Anyway, um, I wonder if you have a ping pong paddle at home and a ball, go get it and uh, see how many times you can uh, bounce it. Let's try seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Well, that was pretty good. Well done. Eight for extra. Take your glasses off. <laughs> now, let's try 490. One, two, three, five, four. Oh, look at that. I can't do it. I don't think, I, I'm pretty sure you couldn't do 490. Or if you can, you do it and then email me back and let me know. That, and then I'll put it on plugged in and everybody will know. But I bet you a lot of people, seven, yeah, seven, we could do seven. But 490, that would be tough. Now, maybe that's not too, too tough. So let's see if I can, um, if I can do seven push-ups. Okay. What? You get back, Bruce. You're too close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. One. Oh, seven. Okay. I did it. Very good. I wonder how red my face is. But let's try 490. One, two, three, four, oh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think ten is enough. Oh, there we go. That's 17, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Very good. There is no way I could do 490 push-ups. And uh, I'm not sure I can do the rest of the service. <laughs> um, so why would Jesus ask uh, the disciples to forgive 490 times um, when it would be so hard, such a hard thing to do? Well, I think one point to make is that it is hard to do. And without God's forgiveness in our lives, because Jesus died on the cross and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins, so that we know that all the things that we have said or done that uh, disappoint God and hurt other people, He, he has forgiven us then that really, really helps uh, us to forgive and to forgive and to forgive. But the other thing is, I don't think Jesus really meant when you get to 490 or one or whatever it is, then you don't have to forgive. I think what Jesus was really saying was, Forgiveness is just part of who you are as a follower of Jesus. And sometimes it's really hard. Um, and sometimes, I'll be honest, boys and girls, sometimes it takes a lot of time to forgive 
when maybe something really bad has happened to you. But as followers of Jesus, we are called to want to always be right with God and right with each other. And saying sorry and saying I forgive you and really meaning it is a wonderful, wonderful way uh, to love God and to love others. And so why would we want to put a number on the amount of times that we can forgive? So that's good, and uh, I'm waiting for all those emails, and if anybody can do 490 push-ups, let me know. Bruce, we got a song? Yeah, well done. I'm thinking my sisters might have got the 490 with me. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, a song which makes a lot of sense about this, because the same way Jesus forgives us, then we can forgive, right? So Jesus took my burdens, and he rolled them in the sea, he rolled them in the sea, he rolled them in the sea. Jesus took my burdens, and he rolled them in the sea, never to remember anymore. This means forgiven and forgotten, right? <laughs> Pretty simple song. Jesus took my burdens and he rolled them in the sea. He rolled them in the sea. He rolled them in the sea. Jesus took my burdens and he rolled them in the sea. Never remember anymore. Now I'm happy. Now I am happy. As happy as can be. Oh, happy as can be. Happy as can be. David, but I will be bringing our attention to the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for this wonderful message already of forgiveness and the joy of forgiveness and the love in forgiveness. And we pray you would open our ears and our heart to hear your voice speaking clearly about the same. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to spend some time over the weeks, maybe months ahead, looking at the Gospel of Mark. It's a very short Gospel, 16 chapters. You can read it with a couple of cups of coffee. <laughs> it's pretty quick, and it moves really quickly, introducing us to Jesus in very clear and wonderful ways. But today, just beginning, chapter 1, initially the first four verses. Here's how it begins. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah. The Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming, clear the road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness. And he preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and had turned to God to be forgiven. We'll stop there. What comes to your mind when you hear that word repent? We just heard it a moment ago here. Repent. Do you see maybe some guy carrying a placard around? Uh, pointing fingers at people. Maybe you think of a cranky old preacher or a cranky old church. Maybe you think of God as a kind of a cosmic killjoy, just wanting to ruin your fun in life. What do you think of when you think of the word? Repent. It might surprise some of us to appreciate that the word repent is actually a doorway to joy. 
joy. The kind of joy we just sang about a moment ago. It's actually a doorway to hope. It's about getting another opportunity to begin again. And that feels so good. To repent means to rethink, to stop, to pause, to reconsider the road that you're on at the moment and where it's been taking you. To take another look in the mirror, if you like, um, and be honest about it, where you're at in life, where God is at in your life, what you've done with your life so far. To repent is literally to do an about face, turn right around from, again, the way you have been walking and how it's led you to a place of regret and to turn around and set your eyes on a new day full of life and of hope. So repentance is actually a gift. It's an amazing gift. In fact, the Bible calls it the gift of repentance. And it's a gift, which is really wonderful, that has your name on it and my name on it. Now John the Baptist, who we just heard about here, he knew all about this amazing gift. And he knew that repentance was a gift to be shared. He knew the greatest blessing people can experience is a peace that comes from being forgiven and knowing that you're loved. Nothing can compare. And that's why it doesn't surprise us when we're about to read that crowds of people came to hear this man speaking about repentance. They knew, these people who came, they knew things weren't quite right in their lives. And religion as they knew it wasn't cutting it. They needed good news, and it looks like, by the way they responded, they needed it right away. In fact, here's the words describing this experience. Fill in the valleys, level the mountains and the hills, straighten out the curves, and smooth the rough places. This message of John the Baptist was like a bulldozer, if you like, uh, building this highway for the Lord to reach the most isolated person, no matter where that person was in the wilderness of life. I mean, when I think of it, that's the heart of God. To meet us where we are. To bring us out from where we are. And to set us free to be who we're meant to be. That's God's heart. So God meets us in our honesty. In our brokenness. In our longing to start again repentance. It's all about bringing down those high peaks of pride that we can stand upon so arrogantly. I'm the best. It's also, though, about lifting us up out of those deep pits of depression where we can beat ourselves up relentlessly with guilt. I'm the worst. And repentance takes those crooked places where we have lied and played around in the shadows and straightens them out, shines light upon it. And repentance makes rough places smooth. So, is it any wonder that John would urge people to consider repentance? And he urged them to consider where they were in life in relationship to other people but mostly in relationship to God. And they did. Listen to the next verse. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and to hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. It's an amazing scene to kind of picture it, all these people. And John knew that the only way people could get ready to recognize and encounter Jesus was through this repentance. When we repent, God meets us there. And what is really wonderful is God doesn't meet us there to clobber us over the head 
and to send us to our room without dinner. God meets us there to cleanse us, to forgive us, to invite us to the table, the family table. And John demonstrates this amazing experience of having a fresh start in life through baptism, a washing on the outside that symbolizes a much greater washing on the inside, getting cleaned up, something everybody needs, whether you're young or whether you're old. But then John says this amazing thing to end our little passage. Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Whoa. So when directing people's attention toward Jesus, who was just about to come, he says, my part, I baptize with water. Someone's coming, Jesus, who's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So forgiveness, whoa, and the liberating, strengthening power of the Spirit of God in your life. Amazing. Can you beat that? And people couldn't wait for that. So, here's the million dollar question. Have you ever repented? Have you ever changed your mind about your outlook on life? About your prejudices? About your attitudes? Have you come clean? Have you faced the facts? Have you fessed up? I mean, Lord, I'm the guy who has messed up, and I can't blame anybody else for where I'm at. I need your help. I mean, have you had the courage to be honest with yourself and honest with God? Because here's the wonderful thing, and I can't yell this loud enough. When we get to that point, God meets us right there. God meets us right there. Right now, in fact, Jesus is all about forgiveness. That's what he does. He's all about fresh starts. He's all about freedom. Here's something wonderful. Jesus understands. Jesus gets it. He cares. He gave his very life in order for you and for me to be free. Clearly, he's for us. He's not against us. Amazing. It's amazing. This is why it's called good news. This is why the Gospel of Mark begins with the words, here's the good news. This is all about good news. So when I close that, this is a good way to pray. I'm going to stop after this. Here's a great way to pray. Lord Jesus, as wild as it sounds, I repent. I really do. I've had enough of where this road has taken me. I long to begin again. This time to begin with you. So Lord, please knock down the mountains of pride and arrogance in my life. Please fill in all the potholes of depression and guilt. Please straighten me out so there's no room for lies or deception. Forgive me for what I've done so far with my life. Lord, Send me the Holy Spirit. Begin a new life in me. My life is yours. Let the new adventure begin. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bruce. Do you have a song for us? I was, thank you, David. I was reading a little bit about a guy, I believe his name was Ray Palmer. Uh, he lived quite a long time back, uh, 18th, 30, he was finishing his college education and he had an awakening to the things of God in his life. And he wrote these words it's in our hymn book. And he said, when after he was asked about these words, when he wrote the very last line, it moved him deeply and there were tears in his eyes. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary. <laughs>
And all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for Sundays. Father of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for strength. Eternal God, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves today in love and service to one another and to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for guidance as we continue to, to try to navigate our ways through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you. But remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And a prayer for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from the assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as Jesus taught us, we're bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for coming to worship with us today.